when one is asked to deliver a keynote speech of this kind, particularly in the presence of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, who is an East African, as he'll have occasion to tell you, one can be pretty reticent, but I'll not allow myself to be. I will allow myself to share my thoughts by way of going back to the past, but without repeating some of the nostalgic moments that were so very ably articulated by my good friend, the Right Honorable Amanya Mushega. But yet, in the context of what is happening now, it is important to remind ourselves that when we are talking about integration as we are now, we are talking about integration of the post-colonial era. And many will remember that the countries that we so cherish today are the products of a very harsh reality of European powers in 1884 and 1885, which means that the boundaries that we are so fond of are artificial boundaries. And their artificiality has been articulated by the testimonies we have had from members of parliament who live on the borders of our countries. And it is instructive that even as we were reclaiming our independence, some of the founding fathers of the African nation were very conscious that if Africa and indeed East Africa were to thrive, then it was necessary that we act as one. We will remember uh, the very well publicized desire by the late president of Tanzania, Mwalimu Kambarage Nyerere, that the independence of Tanzania or Tanganyika then be delayed so that Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania would regain their independence as one country. Those were, in my view, the embryonic stages of the desire for... As soon as we settled in, as an East African community, as we then knew it, started the process of integration, which culminated in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, acting and serving under the East African community in 1967. Testimonies have already been given of those golden years. We have had stories about how good the East African Railways was. We have heard how it was possible for a Ugandan to work in Kenya and how possible it was for a Kenyan to work in Kasese and for a Tanzanian to work in Uganda and for a Kenyan to work in Tabora. We celebrated those institutions. We have been told about the postal union, the telecommunications. We have been told about the East African Airways. We remember fondly the University of East Africa, how it was easy for a Kenyan medical student to study in Mulago and for a Ugandan student to study law at the University of Dar es Salaam and for a Ugandan student to study engineering at the University of Nairobi, we are all nostalgic about those days. We then ask ourselves why it is that recognizing the value of unity as we do and as we appreciate, why is it that in 1977 our countries went out? what brought about the centrifugal forces that saw Uganda go its way, saw Kenya go its way, saw Tanzania go its way, so that we were disunited. Commentators, whether they are politicians or political scientists, 
or just idle speakers would say many things happen. Some would say that it was ideological differences of the leaders of the day. Some would say that there were forces from outside of the continent whose desire is that we remain in a state of disunity. All those assessments are possibly true. But even after we had lost our opportunity for deepening our unity in 1977. It cannot be denied that the desire for unity and the desire for the East African community always remained alive. And that is why, therefore, when in 1998-99, the movement to re-establish the East African community came alive. It was at once sentimental, at once nostalgic, at once visionary, and I'm glad to say that it happened in the presence and through the joint midwifery of the President of the Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. He remains one of, of the midwives at that time he is the only one who is still alive to give us a true testimony of the thinking of the day. But we who are students of history remember that when we thought about creating the East African community, we reminded ourselves that never again shall we make the mistakes that were made by our forebears, that never again shall we have a misstep that never again shall we allow ourselves to be divided by narrow interests that never again shall we allow myopic views to stand in the way of a good project that never again will we allow the newly created east african community to be a body that stands up in the air without being grounded in the minds and hearts of the people. And it is in my understanding that the treaty under whose aegis the East African community is now rested is designed to ensure that the people of East African community is indeed located not only in the hearts but in the minds of the people of East Africa. I remember that when I I read Article 5.2 of the treaty, the very deliberate effort which was people-centered, the statement that we start with a customs union so that the people of East Africa would trade without let and hindrance, that we would go then into the next phase of a common market and that ultimately we would go into a monetary union and that ultimately we would have a political federation. Those are sometimes described by the romanticists as the four pillars upon which East African community stands. But the question that we are here to ask ourselves this afternoon is now that we are on the path of unity how have we performed have we learned the lessons of the past have we understood where we want to go are our people wedded to the ideals of the east african community are we moving with jet like speed to realize the desired federation his Excellency will remember when he and his colleagues met in Nairobi on the 27th and 29th days of August, the year 2004. And Your Excellency will remember then you issued a communique on the 28th day of August. And you will remember then, Your Excellency, that many statements were made. You remember your colleague, the president of Kenya, then the late Mwai Kibaki, saying that indeed East African community is significant 
because we cannot continue to divide the people who are culturally joined at the hip. You will remember your colleague now expanded the Democratic Republic of Congo is now with us. I'm aware that South Sudan is now with us. I'm aware that Rwanda is now with us, that Burundi is now with us. I'm also aware that the Somalis have also indicated their desire to be with us. We are some kind of magnet that is attracting others. But before we consolidate, what then it, is it that we can do? Because Your Excellency and Honorable Members here are present, we must remember that we are, as we are talking about Federation of East Africa, there is no shortage of individuals out there who would not want us to unite. If you did not know, but I suspect you do, there is a new scramble for Africa. That scramble for Africa requires and demands that Uganda remains alone, that Tanzania remains alone, that Kenya remains alone. The only way in which we can immunize ourselves against the diabolical machinations of the new scramblers for Africa is our unity. And I'm submitting to us that you who are members of, Af of East African community, and members of the East African Legislative Assembly, what is it that you can do? Elder statement in East Africa, you presided over 